Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 7 of our training and development course. In this lecture, we will be talking about how to link training to career growth. We will be talking about the various strategies for succession planning and we will also try to explore some case studies on successful career development programs. So, let us get started. So, linking training to career growth. Continuous learning and development are integral in today's dynamic environment. So, as evolve and technology advance, employees must acquire abilities to do a specific task in order to remain business landscape in order to remain competitive landscape. So, basically here career growth we will be talking about importance of continuous we will be talking about various training methods that can really contribute career advancement and we will also be highlighting the role of and professional networking in fostering career growth. Now, the importance of continuous learning and development and career progression. Continuous learning enables individuals to be more adaptable to changing job roles, industry trends and technological advancements. So, employees who embrace learning opportunities are better equipped to learn new challenges and to face new challenges and excel in their careers in diverse work environments. They become more flexible and they become more adaptable to the changing environments which they have to face in the dynamic business landscape. Then we have career advancement opportunities. Employers often prioritize candidates who demonstrate a commitment to personal and professional growth. So, by actively pursuing training and development opportunities, employees increase their chances of being considered for promotion, leadership role and higher level responsibility with the organization. So, training has a vital role to play. Such kind of employees who are actively engaging themselves in training and development programs and they are into the process of continuous learning definitely gain an edge over the other employees. That is about engaging in continuous learning fosters a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction among employees. So, a lot of satisfaction at job employee engagement levels boost the job satisfaction score also increases as a result of the continuous learning and development in career. So, various training methods can be employed by the organizations and uh, they can really contribute towards the skill development, skill enhancement and career advancements of the individuals who are working in the organization. Now, we are going to talk about several such methods. The very first one being formal training program. So, there can be multiple formal training pl platforms such as workshops, seminars, conferences, certification courses organized by the organizations or some external training providers. So, such training programs offers a very, very structured and uh, very, very comprehensive learning experiences to the people designed specifically to develop the specific skills and competencies which are required by the individuals to the employees roles and career goals. So, formal training program is the first element or is the first training method that is an important one. 
Many organizations these days are encouraging uh, their employees to take up certification courses to boost up their skills, to enhance their skills, knowledge, abilities, etc. And uh, they are sending their employees to external training workplaces, they are sending their employees to several conferences, seminars and uh, so on and so forth to ensure that they develop themselves fully. Then is about on the job training. So on the job training involves learning while performing the regular duties. This hands on approach allows employees to acquire new skills through practical experience. They even get, uh, they are even uh, you know exposed to a lot of uh, new knowledge. Mentoring also happens at the workplace. They get hands-on experience at the workplace. They are uh, made to learn through shadowing also at times from the uh, people who are more experienced than them. So certainly, on-the-job training is something which is picking up, and in fact, it has uh, been uh, attracting a lot of people to develop their skills fully. Then many organizations have even started going for e-learning and online courses. So with the pro proliferation of digital learning platforms, employees have access to wide range of such online courses and resources. So we have several platforms which are meant for uh, you know honing the skills of the individuals and uh, you know whatever domain you want to hold, hone your uh, skills into you may be provided with some kind of online platforms which may be developed by the organization specifically to cater to the needs of their organization or they may direct them to take up some courses from some external platform also. So this allows individuals to do the learning at a self-directed pace at a very uh, self-paced learning happens and uh, they can get into any mode of learning uh, as a part of e-learning which offers them a lot of flexibility and convenience. So, Definitely, e-learning is also something that is gaining traction these days. Online courses are gaining traction these days. Now we have uh, another method to make people learn through training and that is called as cross-functional projects. So cross-functional projects uh, is something related to participating in uh, cross-functional projects or job rotations and they definitely expose the individuals to different aspects of businesses and help them develop a diverse skill set. So these experiences broaden the perspective of, of the individuals and then they further uh, you know hone their skills, prepare them for taking up the future leadership role. Now in this connection before we move further I would just like to tell you about the career development uh, that happens in uh, Google. right? So Google is an organization uh, which provides extensive opportunities for its employees to hone their skills and uh, develop their career in the best possible manner. So some of the uh, salient features uh, which Google primarily gets into and uh, primarily offers to its employees in terms of career development opportunities to them include some employee to employee interaction, micro learning, unique teaching pedagogies for the people, Google's training and development programs are very very robust with up to 80 percent of learning activities delivered through the uh, method which is uh, focusing on Googler to Googler interaction. So Googler would be a person who would be working with uh, with the with the, you know Google and uh, Googler to Googler interaction is something which they really want to create the culture of. Then this approach allows employees to learn from each other while on job, fostering a culture that values continuous learning. So their basic focus is on ensuring that the continuous learning happens. Additionally, Google devises certain micro learning content which would mean they would deliver the training content in some small digestible chunks. So instead of giving uh, them huge training content and instead of giving them huge videos and online platforms to learn from, they would give them small digestible chunks so that they are uh, easy to absorb for them also. And uh, this strategy 
including uh, there was a, there's a strategy called as whisper courses which aim to enhance the memory retention and information processes for the employees so google's success is in career development is evident in its position as a leading company with the state of the art infrastructure with innovative training methods contributing to the overall growth and success of the organization next we move to the various career paths that are offered to the individuals so google offers variety of career paths to its individuals across multiple teams and departments for example they have uh, various career paths including sales marketing google cloud finance google technology services so these teams provide opportunity for individuals to grow professionally and personally with resources such as classes one to one mentoring 20% projects google also offers internship and full time roles allowing individuals to explore their interest and develop their area so they have diverse career paths for the individuals well set in advance they have a very good uh, connect with the individuals they let them know about the career opportunities which are available so this gives individuals a sense of belongingness and the very feeling that the organization is being very considerate towards them and the organization is thinking about their priorities also so they always believe in this kind of philosophy and this is one reason why they are able to successfully become what they are now we'll talk about role of mentorship coaching and professional networking in fostering the professional growth so the very first here is mentoring or mentorship mentors are the ones who basically provide guidance advice and support to mentees based on their own experience and expertise so mentorship relationship can uh, accelerate career growth by offering variable insights a mentor also provides adequate networking opportunities to people they provide adequate uh, support for accelerating the career growth they provide them with constructive feedback from time to time they provide them with adequate and ample opportunity to grow in their careers so mentorship can really be an effective tool for enhancing the career growth so organization can think of providing the adequate kind of training to the mentor uh, mentors to provide the right mentoring to the people also then next we have coaching so coaches help individuals identify their strengths the areas of improvement and career goals through one to one coaching sessions employees can develop some action plans they can enhance their skills and they can work on the corrective actions and overcome all kinds of obstacles that come their way and help them become more professionally sound and next we have professional networking so building and nurturing professional network is essential for career growth networking allows individuals to connect with industry peers potential mentors and career opportunities so by emphasizing the importance of career uh, continuous learning discussing various training methods and highlighting the role of mentorship coaching and professional networking the organizations can really be very successful in creating a conducive environment for the individuals to learn and grow in their careers now let's have a look at the succession planning strategies now before we begin with the succession planning strategies let me tell you about what is succession planning succession planning is a strategic process that involves identifying and developing the internal talent so it's about identifying and developing the internal talent to key fill key leadership and critical roles within the organization it ensures continuity in leadership and maintains organizational effectiveness especially during the times of transition or unforeseen circumstances so you basically basically you are identifying the talent from within and you are trying your level best to develop them to the fullest and uh, this process is what you call as uh, succession planning so organization have to be organizations have to be very very careful in planning the succession 
and there can be various strategies which can be followed for ensuring that this critical process is addressed in a very nice fashion. Before discussing the strategies, there can be multiple examples of successful succession planning which include Apple where Steve Jobs handpicked Tim Cook as a successor, then Microsoft which has a comprehensive leadership program. Succession planning can lead to cost saving, they can increase productivity by means, means of it. They can uh, really, really be benefited in multiple ways by identifying and developing the internal talent. So, it is a strategic investment in a company's future success thereby ensuring a robust talent pipeline and a culture of continuous learning. So, now we will be just touching upon some of the important strategies of succession planning. Succession planning is essential for ensuring the long term sustainability of an organization, especially in cases of adversities or in case of any kind of eventuality or in case of unforeseen circumstances, if we have the talent from within the organization already uh, available and his talent is also developed to the fullest, taking into consideration any kind of unforeseen circumstances, then certainly it will not hamper the organization sustenance. The sustainability of an organization can be ensured by means of succession planning. So, by proactively identifying and grooming potential successors uh, for key positions, organizations mitigate the risks of, uh, you know, risks which are associated with leadership vacancies and maintain operational continuity. Then is about talent retention and engagement. So, succession planning demonstrate a commitment to employee development and career advancement fostering loyalty and engagement among high potential employees. So, the people who have high caliber and who are suitable to take up the roles of the top management positions are usually identified in the beginning itself and then their skills are honed to take on those roles. So, when employees see themselves and when employees see opportunities for the growth and uh, development and advancements within the organization, they are likely to stay and contribute to its success. So, opportunity is something that everybody is looking out for. Today in this era, which is uh, considered to be era of protein careerists, wherein people want to take the strategic control of their career, they are always looking for opportunities, they are looking for uh, better career, they are always wanting to have the strategic control of their career. So, in today's era, if the organizations provide career opportunities to the people for their growth and advancement, it would be viewed very, very positively and would further contribute towards individuals evoking the citizenship behavior at the organization also. Next, we have competitive advantage. So, organizations with effective succession planning processes are better positioned to respond because they are always proactive in taking the steps related to the preparedness for future and they are able to capitalize on the emerging opportunities also. So, by having a pipeline of talented employees ready to step into the leadership roles, organizations can adapt more quickly and more swiftly also. So, this is about the different strategies that can be planned for succession planning in the organization. Uh, a classic example in this context could be Tata Group, a prominent Indian uh, conglomerate which has exemplified this succession planning concept. They have very well implemented the concept of succession planning in their systems and for various verticals, they have been successful in uh, succession planning for their employees. For example, uh, succession planning in its listed companies include Titan, Voltas, Rallis, Indian Hotels. The group has a track record of effective succession with short bridging role by veteran leaders like uh, Homi Khusro Khan. The search committee for the chairperson succession has been very, very transparent, setting time targets and adopting relevant criteria with the assistance of a specialist firm. So, organization has been uh, very, very successful in implementing the planning uh, process uh, for planning the succession in the uh, various verticals in a very beautiful manner. So, they identify the top talent in the organization and then they further prepare them to take up the roles in case of 
any kind of uh, future emergency or maybe uh, any other adversity. So, after this we move to identifying the key positions and potential successors of the organization. So, uh, at this stage it is important to understand how does this identification of key positions and potential successes within the organization take place. So, the very first step here is key position analysis. Key position analysis is a thorough in depth analysis of the structure of the organization. Structure would here mean the way in which the individuals are uh, you know organized in the organization, the way in which the people are linked in the organization and the strategic objectives are also supposed to be taken care of to identify the key positions which are critical to the organization. So, right in the beginning itself the uh, key positions which are critical to the success of the organization are identified. So, there can be multiple roles for example, executive roles may be there, specialized technical positions can be there or there can be some several other leadership roles in key functional areas that uh, require this key position analysis. Then it is about talent assessment and development. So, when it comes to talent assessment and development, we need to evaluate the employee's skills, their competence level, their potential to determine the suitability for key positions. So, at this stage it is important for us to uh, see how the performance will be evaluated. You know leadership assessment is something that uh, is required. Then competency based interviews are supposed to be taken to identify the high potential employees in the organization. So, high potential employees are the ones who are uh, good in terms of productivity, who are good in terms of emotional intelligence, who are good in terms of exhibiting the right kind of leadership skills within the organization. So, such top talents are identified and therefore, uh, you know after that uh, the right kind of efforts are put in to ensure that they are being developed fully to take up the positions the key positions in the organization. After this uh, talent identification and uh, development happens. So, at this stage we have just discussed uh, that it is about understanding the potential successors, investing in the development through training, mentoring, coaching, stretching the assignments. We will provide them adequate opportunities uh, for exposure to different areas of businesses and experiences that will prepare them for the future leadership role. So, it is a very very critical function that needs to be performed in the organization because the success of the organization typically depends upon these aspects. Then we have something called a succession pools. At times we try to create a talent pipeline within the organization. So, it is not just one individual is going to be trained for a particular uh, position in the organization rather a succession pool is created. And this pool consists of individuals who have been identified as potential successor for key positions. So, we need to maintain regular communication with these individuals, we need to assess their progress and adjust the development plans as to ensure their readiness for future leadership roles. So, we are creating this talent pipeline or, and we are also creating a succession pool to choose from. Now, after this we move to some of the best practices and approaches to succession planning implementation. Now, the very first thing which is very much required for succession planning implementation is executive support and improvement sorry involvement. So, succession planning requires commitment and support from the top leaders. A lot of uh, effort is required and also a lot of support is required to be taken from the top management to, uh, to smoothly take up the role of to smoothly take up the uh, exercise of succession planning. So, executive sponsorships help prioritize succession planning initiatives, allocate resources and drive accountability for implementation. Then after this we have integrated talent management. So, we have to integrate the succession planning with other talent management processes such as performance man management, leadership development and workforce planning. So, the moment we align these processes, it ensures a holistic approach to talent development and succession readiness. Another aspect of it is 
another practice, a best practice and approach to succession planning implementation is regular review and update. So, it is a process, succession planning is an ongoing process which requires regular review and also the adjustments based on changing business needs. So, wisely uh, doing this thing and assessing the succession readiness and making any necessary adjustment to the succession plan is something very much required. So, we need to constantly in a periodic manner the talent reviews have to be done. Then it is about fostering transparency and open communication about succession planning process. So, it should not be done in a very hidden way, it should be a very transparent manner, it should be done in a very transparent fashion, it should be done in a very very uh, you know unbiased way and open communication has to be there about succession planning within the organization. Providing adequate feedback to the employees on their development, how they are progressing, keeping a track of the progress of the people who are going to be developed on uh, the succession planning and the career advancement opportunities which can be given to them to keep them engaged and motivated have to be there in order to make it happen in the best possible manner. So, now we will take up few examples uh, and we will take up some case studies by means of which we would try to uh, talk about the succession planning. So, there is this case 1 company X building future leaders. Now, this organization company X is a leading multinational corporation and it is known for its commitment to employee development and talent management. The organization recognizes the importance of investing in a workforce to build a pipeline of future leaders and drive long term success. So, the organization recognizes the importance of investing in its workforce to build a pipeline of future leaders and drive long term success. How does it take up uh, this thing? Let us just have a look around it. Now, the very first thing is uh, company X fosters a culture of continuous learning and development where employees are encouraged to pursue growth opportunities and take ownership of their career paths. I would like to uh, elaborate it a bit, wherein the organization realized that it is the need of the hour to take care of the career paths of the individuals, which would mean that people should know what their career paths are, what is their standing at this particular point of time and after extensive training which is given to them or the development opportunities that are provided to them, where would they be landing. So, all these things are a part of the talent development culture of the organization itself. So, these days organizations have to be very, very careful and they have to be very wise in providing the adequate opportunities to the individuals who are working in the organization. It is because of the reason that the employees are demanding such kind of things. And this is one reason why career development opportunities from the organizations is something which is being looked upon by the prospective employees. So, talent development culture has to be there and many of the organizations have al already started adopting this culture of talent development, wherein they think that it is important to take care of the continuous learning and development because individuals want to develop themselves, they, they do not want to uh, stop their learning, they want to constantly groom themselves, they do not want to confine themselves to one particular job, rather they are looking for a career in future. So, employees are encouraged to pursue growth opportunities and take ownership of their career paths. Now, next is structured career pathways. The organization offers this organization offers structured career pathways that provide clear advancement opportunities for employees at various stages. And uh, there are few things that it takes care of. The very first thing is career tracks. So, career tracks would mean where would the career of an individual go, right? And where is it at this particular point of time? If he takes adequate learning and development opportunity, where would he be landing? after 2 years, after 1 year, after 6 months, so on and so forth. Then they have some kind of competency frameworks and developmental plans ta training uh, tailored to individual aspirations and organizational needs. So, the organization has to 
have structured career pathways for the employees working in the organization so that they know what their career opportunities are like for example the organization may think on the lines of uh, providing some kind of developmental opportunities to the people what can those development opportunities be they can literally mean some kind of career development opportunities wherein they are not just restricted to the job oriented courses and job oriented training program rather it is something which is looking uh, it is something uh, about looking at a holistic perspective of the grooming of an individual right they may be provided with some kind of potential assessments and potential uh, assessments for the individual which would me mean that at the time of performance evaluation of an individual the performance of an individual is evaluated but when it comes to potential assessment it would mean that instead of just focusing on the performance of an individual we are focusing on the potential of the individual which would mean that maybe at a certain point of time the individual is not able to perform well because of some reason or the other but then he may be capable of doing a lot and because of some factor or the other he was not able to perform at a particular point of time but then he has immense potential so instead of just considering his present performance his potential is taken into consideration this also gives individuals a sense of belongingness towards the organization because they understand that the organization is taking care of them right and is uh, you know letting go one of such instances wherein because of some reason or the other the individual's performance went a little low then some of the key initiatives which this organization takes for ensuring the learning and development of its employees is mentorship program so company x offers formal mentoring programs that pair high potential employees with seasoned leaders within the organization so what an excellent way it is wherein the individuals are paired with the industry leaders so you get professional mentors to develop your potential to the fullest so these mentors not only provide you guidance advice support but also help them navigate their careers develop the new skills and overcome challenges so it is always recommended in fact many organizations do this they give them some industry mentors also so that they can look up to them to navigate their careers in the long run they also help them in understanding what would they be after some point of time how can they groom their skills what all do they need to keep them uh, ahead of the competition which is existing therein right so such kind of mentorship program is uh, something that this organization primarily focus focuses upon then is about leadership training so company invest in leadership training designed to develop the next generation of leaders so these programs cover a range of leadership competencies like strategic thinking decision making communication and team building and training sessions are delivered through a combination of workshops seminars and online courses so they are very much into leadership training so this organization may not be interested in a particular domain or may not be uh, really Uh, into a particular domain but then they are providing some kind of leadership trainings to their individuals to groom their skills to hone their skills in the best possible ma manner because it is believed that critical thinking skills are the most important ones which organizations are always sorry which individuals are always looking forward to and the organization because it is a need of the hour also so strategic thinking decision making communication enhancement you know emotional intelligence team building exercises soft skills you know they ha they constantly uh, use a blend of various methods and they try to keep their employees always motivated to train such kind of sessions then is about rotational assignment now what is this rotational assignment this organization company x provides its employees with adequate set of rotational assignments wherein apart from the role which they play they are made to go for some kind of job rotation so they are not just restricted to doing the work related to their domain this way when they are made to go for job rotation or when they are made to go for rotational assignments this would mean that an individual working in a specific domain or an individual working in a particular uh, area would be would be uh, asked to go and perform the part of some other 
uh, organization also. So, this way rotational assignments uh, can uh, give ample opportunities to the employees for cross functional and cross departmental rotations. So, when it comes to cross functional and cross departmental rotations, I mean uh, this kind of thing can really make them gain exposure to different areas of businesses. And rotational assignments allow employees to broaden their skill set, expand their network and gain valuable insights into various aspects of the organization. And job rotation or rotational uh, you know assignments are uh, some something of great relevance these days. Apart from this the organization also thinks on the lines of something called as job enlargement and job enrichment opportunities for its employees. So, I will just uh, take you through what is this job enlargement and job, job enrichment. So, company X wisely thinks on the li uh, lines of job enlargement for its employees which would mean that giving additional responsibilities to the individuals without a pay upgrade to them which would include including some kind of challenges at work because it is important to understand that some kind of challenges have to be brought into the job every now and then uh, to keep the people at work more motivated and more engaged. Then it is about job enrichment which would mean uh, they are given more responsibilities, they are made to perform more uh, tasks, duties etcetera with change in the salaries also. Then what is the impact of this uh, employee retention? What is the outcome and impact on the employee retention and organizational performance? So, this organization is doing phenomenally well in terms of providing adequate career opportunities to its employees, giving them n number of things related to additional uh, you know mentoring opportunities to their employees, developing them fully, uh, understanding the high potential of the individuals, giving, giving them adequate uh, training opportunities so on and so forth. Now, what are the outcomes? and impacts of such things on the employee retention and organizational performance. So, obviously by doing so much for the organization, I mean uh, for the employees who are working in the organization, the enhanced employee retention was something which was gained. It is usually seen, in fact there are many researches also to support the fact that those organizations which are provided ample opportunities for career development to their employees, they are likely to succeed in their career. And uh, I mean uh, those organizations which are providing adequate opportunities for their employees to develop their career are able to retain the employees for long. So, there was this uh, scholar A.B. et al. Uh, these these people have come up with several career uh, management strategies for ensuring that uh, the people are put to work and they are made to perform in the best possible manner. So, company X, X's you know career development initiative contribute to the higher levels of employee engagement. They were seen to be more when the job satisfaction survey was taken, it was seen that they were more satisfied at work they were more retaining, I mean they were retaining more, they were more interested in staying with the same organization. So, employees definitely feel more valued and supported in their career growth leading to increased loyalty towards the organization. So, see how many uh, benefits uh, does this kind of practices that the organization is following has on the multiple factors. Like for example, if the organization is taking care of the employee's career development needs, then it eventually leads to higher satisfaction, higher engagement level, higher retention rate of the individuals and also it is increasing the loyalty to the organization because the organization uh, in the organization the employees feel valued and they feel that they own the organization when they are made to develop themselves in their career. Then is about improved organizational performance. Naturally, when the employee engagement level would be high, they would be more satisfied with the organization, their retention rate would be high. Then it is something uh, evident of the fact that the internal uh, customer of the organization, that is the employees of the organization, they are highly happy and they are highly satisfied 
in the organizations. So, when they are satisfied in the organization, they are really very uh, committed towards the organization. This would bring in some kind of you know reflections and this would definitely contribute towards the organizational performance also. So, investing in talent development of uh, pays dividends in terms of organizational performance. Company X benefits from a highly skilled and motivated workforce capable of driving innovation, executing strategic in, uh, initiatives and delivering the results. So, the employee organization's uh, leadership pipeline ensures continuity in leadership and maintains operational excellence. Then by providing employees with diverse development opportunities, company X ensures a steady flow of talent ready to step into the leadership roles when needed. So, since there are so many opportunities provided to them, they are having a clear cut view of the organization's uh, vision for them. So, at any point of time, the individuals are ready to take up the leadership positions when needed. So, employees are very well prepared to take on the challenges with the higher level of their uh, critical thinking skills uh, already put into place, right. With new challenges, they are ready to take up new responsibilities contributing to the organization's long term success and sustainability. Now, we will talk about the second case, which is about seamless succession planning. Now, this company Y is a global corporation which is known for its seamless succession planning strategy, which is integral to its long term success and sustainability. The organization recognizes the importance of identifying and developing the talent to ensure continuity in leadership and maintain operational excellence. A few moments back I talked about Tata, a conglomerate of businesses, which is essentially very good at uh, planning the succession in the organization. Similar this organization company Y is a global corporation which is known for its uh, seamless succession planning and it recognized the importance of uh, identifying and developing the talent to ensure continuity in leadership and maintain operational excellence. How does it do it? Company Y's succession planning strategy is aligned with its overall business goals and objectives. So, it is always to be seen that if any strategy is to be followed, is it in tandem with the company vision and mission or not? Is it in tandem with the strategic intent of the organization or not? So, the organization understands the critical role that leadership plays in driving performance and achieving the strategic outcomes. Next is proactive approach. This organization is proactive enough to plan the succession, they anticipate the leaders future, I mean they anticipate the future needs of the leaders or future leadership uh, needs and identify the various potential successors who may be taken into consideration. So, this proactive mindset enables the organizations to respond swiftly to leadership vacancies and transitions. Now, let me tell you how do they do it, how do they understand and how do they examine how company why uh, you know identifies and grooms high potential employees for future leaders. The very first is talent identification, how do they do it? It utilizes a very rigorous process to identify the high potential employees with the skills, competencies leadership potential which is necessary for success. And this particular exercise need whole host of evaluation mechanisms and they have to do a lot of assessment to figure out who would take on this kind of role. It is followed by multiple level of assessments which may be qualitative assessments, the quantitative assessments, the personality tests, the emotional intelligence tests the uh, disguise tests, the psychometric assessments to understand the talent which is available. So, it is not necessary though that those individuals who would have a very high IQ would be able to take on these roles in a very efficient manner. It is uh, not always that. So, a lot of things have to be checked and a lot of things have to be, lot of assessments have to be taken prior to putting the person into 
the succession planning mode. So, high potential people are to be identified with the skills, competencies, leadership potential necessary for future success, which involves performance evaluation, leadership assessments, there are some leadership assessment tests which are taken and talent reviews uh, are also taken to assess the individual's readiness for advancements. So, there are two things which are very, very important. They need to have adequate amount of skills to take on the role and also they need to have the will to take on the role. If they have skill and they do not have will, they will not be able to perform that well. But then if they do not have skills but have will, they can skill be trained and they can really be groomed to take on such kind of position. So, all these things have to be assessed at various levels to see what kind of talent do we have. Then once the high potential employees are, uh, there are several tests which can be taken, there can be several assessment criteria, there are some uh, dedicated organizations, consultancies which are primarily into the function of identifying the high potential uh, employees in the organization. Now, once these high potential employees are finalized, they are, uh, you know, they are identified, the company invests in their development through targeted training, coaching, mentoring initiatives. So, employees are provided with opportunities to enhance their career uh, leader capabilities, broaden their skill set and also gain exposure to different aspects of business. So, development opportunities, adequate development opportunities are provided by company. Why to these employees? To make things happen in the best possible manner. Then as about succession planning committee. Now, the succession planning committee comprises of uh, top leaders of the organization. Who, which are meant for and some external parties also, some veterans in the field who are responsible for overseeing the talent identification and development process. So, these committees are comprised of several leaders and HR professionals who assess succession readiness, monitor progress and also make recommendation for leadership appointments. Now, we come to role of performance management and talent assessment in succession planning. The very first is the performance management. Now, when we talk about performance management, it is a cornerstone of company's wise success succession planning strategy. So, performance management is a very, very broad term which starts with planning the performance, you know, evaluating the performance of an individual and finally, taking the necessary steps to do any kind of corrective action. So, performance management is the cornerstone of company's wise, company wise succession planning strategy. The organization emphasizes the importance of setting clear standards, clear performance expectations, providing regular feedback and evaluating employees contribution to the business. And performance reviews serve as a basis for identifying high performing individuals and potential areas of development. So, do they need some uh, training on critical thinking skills? Do they need some kind of cognitive development trainings? Do they need some kind of uh, leadership development programs to hone their skills? Do, ne do they need some kind of high performance work culture kind of training in the organization? All these things have to be seen and valued very right in a very right manner. Then is about uh, talent assessment. So, definitely uh, talent assessment also has a very vital role to play in succession planning. Because uh, the organization utilizes a variety of assessment techniques including competency assessments, 360 degree approach, psychometric assessment as I mentioned to evaluate the employee's strengths, weaknesses and leadership potential. So, these assessments uh, inform succession decision and help identify development needs for future leaders. Now, uh, the question which arises is, what can be the various exercises that can really help us promote the culture of uh, succession planning and uh, what can they be? So, the very first is self-assessment and goal setting. So, this self-assessment and uh, goal setting would mean something related to conducting a self-assessment of current skills, competencies and career goals. Uh, then outlining the strengths, areas of development and long term career aspirations, 
सेटिंग स्मार्ट गोल्स फॉर एम्प्लॉय डेवलपमेंट और करियर डेवलपमेंट बेस्ड ऑन इंसाइट गेंड स्मार्ट हेयर वुड मीन स्पेसिफिक मेजरेबल एक्शनेबल realistic and time bound goals for the individuals next is a uh, lot of case study analysis can be done because case studies helps in cognitive development of the individuals it helps them uh, get very good insight on uh, what you call as uh, it it helps them gain an insight into uh, some kind of uh, critical thinking skills their skills are brushed up and honed like anything so as a part of case study analysis and action planning a lot of case studies related to career development and succession planning challenges can be analyzed then we may identify the key issues and opportunities and uh, brainstorming the actionable strategies considering the lecture principles may be employed role playing scenarios can be highly effective in uh, this kind of thing then we can have peer coaching and feedback where we can pair the participants as peer coaches guide the uh, coaching sessions on career aspirations and feedback delivery and facilitate group discussions to share experiences and insights next is action plan development it helps participants create action plans for implementing initiatives provide them with the uh, a very you know it provides them with a structured template or framework for participants to outline specific steps timelines and stakeholders and encourage the participants to set realistic milestones and metrics for evaluation so you know action plan development is an important aspect and it needs to be addressed very wisely so these kind of exercises can be uh, there and they'll not only reinforce the concepts learned during the lecture but also empower participants to take actionable steps towards their career development and multiple career development strategies may be employed by the organization to take care of the need of the hour so i would quickly like to summarize whatever we have discussed in today's session so in today's session we primarily talked about career development and succession planning wherein the training was linked to career growth and we talked about the importance of continuous learning and development in career progression discussed about various training methods and how they can contribute towards the skill development of the individuals and how they can really uh, work towards the career advancements of the individuals and then we also highlighted the role of mentorship coaching feedback mechanism professional networking and fostering the career growth within the organization then there were some strategies which were discussed for succession planning by taking some case studies with this i would like to thank you all